let's say for real estate, um, one of the biggest myth is I don't have any money. I can't invest in real estate. Well, that's not true because you can always partner up with other people who has who has money. Uh, there's way of doing deals without any money. Uh, I've done lots of deals where I did, didn't contribute a cent to to my deals, and therefore it can be done because I think there's there's lots of different parties involved. And for a quick example, uh, lots of prop. Uh, let's say. Uh, buy, fix, and hold properties, and uh, buy, fix, and hold properties where we rent the property out. There's usually a a money person. There's also a person who manages it, or a person who does renovations and whatnot. Well, you could be one of those parties. You could play one of those roles. You don't have to be the person that comes up with money, as long as you add value to that project. Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Expert. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups into seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now, today we've got another great uh, guest on the podcast, Fong Chua. That's as close as I'm going to get to pronouncing his name right, but I give it my best shot. Uh, but we're going to be talking a little bit about a few different things, including real estate, um, how you might uh, start your own real estate portfolio and how you might go down that path. Also look at uh, maybe a little bit more on public speaking and speaking engagements and strategies going along there. Also look a little bit about uh, maybe book writing and kind of content and putting your information out there and uh, and then more generally just uh, on some mindset topics of how you uh, over can sometimes overcome fear and uh, at or attack the unknown and have positivity going along the way. So it should be a, a fun discussion and a lot of uh, good areas to hit on. And so with that much as, uh, as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Fong. Hey, awesome. Thank you very much, Devin. Always a joy uh, speaking with you and your audience and always joy trying to add as much value as I can. Uh, funny how you mentioned my last name. I figured like it's one syllable. How hard can it be? Uh, it might be. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I realized that my wife's last name is actually harder to, to pronounce than my last name. And she only has two consonants, no vowels, NG. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, I, I think it's it's one of those where if it's a or out of the ordinary, you, it, it's as much as you worry that you're going to mess up or that you're not going to get it right. And then it probably compounds the issue in the first place. So it makes it a, <laughs> it makes it a fun time and uh, always keeps me on my toes. So so now just as a, a quick reminder to the audience. So Fong has been on our sister podcast, The Inventive Journey. And if you want to go and uh, check out all of his journey there, definitely encourage you to do so. But uh, for those people that uh, haven't had a chance to check it out or just looking for a quick introduction, uh, introduce yourself a bit to the audience. Yeah, so uh, like Devin said, my name is Fong Chua. I, I love helping people unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed, uh, increasing their exposure, impacting their lives, adding value as much as I can. And um, a quick kind of backstory is basically, uh, I started out as a structural engineer. I've been in that industry for uh, many, many years. And then when the 2007, 2008 downturn came in my hometown, Edmonton, Alberta, where oil and gas drives the entire economy, uh, that's when we started looking into real estate. And then from there, uh, in a quick little, I think about four or five years, we built a portfolio from zero properties to about 23 properties over 30 some units. And then uh, with the help of our coach and mentors at the time, I uh, started coaching other people in real estate, uh, started doing speaking engagements, started doing uh, podcasts, book writing and all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, that's been about, what, 10, 15 years, 10 to 12 years ago is when I started all this stuff. So, uh, and now here I am. No, that's awesome. Sounds like it's been a great journey. Now, I'll just uh, highlight one of the interesting aspects, which is you said, hey, here's a great idea. The economy has gone through a major housing crisis and a downturn over the last couple of years. I'm going to get into that industry. So how did you how did you decide that at the the height or maybe right after the height of the downturn of the housing bubble bursting, that was the industry that made sense to get into. And, I, and we'll get into a little bit of the area's expertise, but just wanted to, to highlight that just because I think it's interesting. Well, I think that uh, when everything's going down, I guess that's the best time to jump in because you get to negotiate more, you get to find motivated sellers. Uh, that's when you are actually able to get into deals uh, that has the most upside. 
So uh, that's mm -hmm. how I started. Like uh, we started buying uh, condo units, started doing uh, rental properties at that time, and then kind of grew it from there. No, that's awesome. And and I tend to agree. And I just like to, to highlight that because I think that <laughs> it's interesting when you, a lot of times, you know, COVID was a, a lot for the same people. You either had a, a downturn, you're trying to just scramble and get by, or some people figured out a way that, hey, this is, or we can leverage this to, um, you know, as there's a shakeup in the industries and outside the norm and it presents opportunities. And I think you can look at it either way and whichever way you look at it is probably the way direction or business will go. And so definitely sounds like uh, it was a, a good time for you to get into it. So now, so with that, you know, one of the the things that I or that uh, you'd hit on and, 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 you know, you got into the real estate industry and I think people of varying degrees want to get into real estate. Everybody would love to have passive income. Everybody would like to just have a home that they rent out or a property they have. And yet there's also plenty, of, you know, and there's all the house flipping shows and all of these things out there. And yet is there just, just as many people that get in there, they sink in a lot of money, they lose it all. They have to, you know, start their savings all over again and go down the paths that, you know, don't lead to wealth. And so how do you, you know, if you were to say as a more conservative person or someone maybe less experienced, how do you even start to get into building a a real estate portfolio? I guess for myself, uh, I, I, I came from a family that didn't have any real estate background, investment background, business background. So I really w started off very conservatively. What can we do? Uh, what are the right deals? Uh, what's profitable? What is the least amount of risk when we're jumping into real estate? And the very first thing we did was get a lot of education, learn, learn the concepts, learn the or exit strategies, learn all the different types of uh, investment opportunities that you can do in real estate. And then once you know all that stuff, I come from a structural engineering background. I love numbers. I can calculate a deal like th there's no tomorrow. However, that doesn't do anything if you only look at numbers all the time. And the thing that we were missing the most was having that one person or that group of people who are in the same mindset, who are able to support and encourage and challenge us, uh, who can show us the way kind of thing. And that's what our coach did because um, I was... I had I had these deals that I calculated and I'm like, oh, these are great deals. But then I didn't put out offers because I didn't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. I was afraid that what happens if it gets accepted? In fact, that was the, the that was the most fear, fearful part of my my journey was when we put an offer on a condo unit at the time. And I think it was we offered 30, 40,000 below what they listed it at. And I was freaked out of my mind if they accepted it. I couldn't sleep that night. I'm like, oh no, what do I do? What do I do? What if they take it? Well, obviously they did not even reply back with a counter offer. And I'm like, oh, I feel so much lighter now. They didn't take the offer. Um, but the thing is, once I we, once we had that coach, we were able to, to bounce off those uh, ideas, bounce those, uh, those, those deals off of them and then find out, okay, is this a good deal? Does this make sense? What can I expect next? What's my next step? Uh, how do I negotiate better? How do I put out the offer so that they will accept it? All that kind of stuff helps when you know what's going to go next and you have that kind of contingency plan, knowing that there's somebody there who can help you if something goes wrong. So that was the biggest thing, having the, the knowledge, but then also having somebody there to guide you along and that really, really helps. No, I think that uh, makes sense. And I, I think that, you know, that's probably applicable across a lot of industries, not just real estate of having a, whether it's a coach, a mentor, somebody that's done there, has the experience, has been through it, or they can even, if nothing else, is act as a sounding block or just a person that will tell you, maybe this is something you should slow down on, or maybe it's not quite as, as a good idea as you might have thought of, I think is definitely uh, helpful in in making sure that you make those right decisions, especially when, you know, when you're getting into real estate and it tends to be one where you're going to put in a considerable amount of time, money, and effort uh, if you're going to get the right deal. So now, as you were building that out, you, so you did, uh, you got into real estate, build out the portfolio, but you've also done a few other things with speaking engagements and book writing and um, helping a lot of people. And, and, you know, and I think that that kind of sometimes goes hand in glove where, you know, you're, in the real estate market, you have to present yourself well, you have to be able to communicate, you have to convince people. And I, you know, it's, it's basically sales, right? So in other words, you have to do that as part of the, or as part of if you're going to be or buying and selling properties, but I think it's a great skill. And yet, you know, if you're to look at most people, 
they tend to get nervous. They tend to get worried about, you know, doing speaking and how, you know, presenting themselves and how they'll be perceived and all of those things along the way. And so when you're getting into that, just starting out, kind of what are some of the maybe strategies or ways that you go about finding speaking engagements that are a good fit for you? And then also um, getting ready and preparing so that it, you start to use it as a benefit rather than uh, something that uh, makes you anxious. Uh, so first of all, to kind of tag on what you were talking about on uh, having that person guide you along and all kind of stuff, asking the right questions. I find that a lot of people ask the right questions, but they usually ask the wrong people. They ask their family, their friends, people who may have uh, done done something similar, but didn't do it successfully. Well, then my question would be, well, why are you asking that person if they didn't do it successfully, right? Obviously, they're going to tell you it's not going to work and all that kind of stuff. So if anybody wants to jump into either real estate, investments, cryptocurrency, starting a business, seek out those people who are actually doing it and doing it successfully, and you're going to get the right feedback versus the people who are too afraid to take those steps. They're going to give you answers that you're not going to want to hear, and then they're going to hold you back. They're coming from a place of love, but you're not going to move anywhere forward because of the information they give you. So ask the right people. Um, going to, on to the speaking stuff, I, I realized that speaking is one of the most important skill sets that people need to have. Because when you're able to speak and speak confidently, then you're able to present yourself, you're able to connect with people, you're able to build relationships, and everything kind of stems from relationships, really. If there's no relationships, nothing, nothing happens. Um, how often do you hear people go, oh, I need to find a job, here's my resume. How how likely are they going to get that job or that job interview if they th threw it into the system for that company to sift through and all that kind of stuff, or if they pass that resume to someone who's already working there and have them pass it on to somebody directly? Most mm -hmm. likely, you'll get that interview because there's a connection. Uh, whether you get the job or not, well, that's that's on you if, if you get the interview. It's all on you at that time. So relationships are really, really important. And hence, speaking is a big thing. And for me, uh, working on speaking is something I've been putting a lot of time on, being able to speak in front of people, in front of uh, large audiences, or either one-on-one -on -one uh, situations, so that you're able to build a relationships and expand from there. Um, I've been in situations where I was leading teams of engineers and designers back in engineering, where there's so many different types of people, especially in engineering, who... Mm -hmm don't want to speak, who don't want to go out there and work on speaking skill sets or go into meetings. They just want to sit down and crunch numbers. Uh, well, unfortunately, during that period of time where uh, everybody was being laid off, uh, there was this one engineer who came up to me and goes, why, why is it that every time there's a downturn, I seem to be the first one that gets let go? Is it because of my work ethic? Is it because my, my technical skills are not good? I'm like, no, no, no. I can put you on any project and I know you'll get good quality calculations done and designs done. However, when I need to reduce my staff down to a select few, I need somebody who's able to sit in front of the client and go and do calculations. And unfortunately, you don't communicate as well as that person does. Hence, we have to keep those other people. So that kind of was a, a light bulb in that person was like, okay, I do have to work on skill sets where it's not technical. It's more of the soft skills and speaking is one of those big things. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, when I work with a lot of my clients who are scared of speaking or have issues trying to speak out or uh, speak out their minds, my, my thing is I challenge them to do videos online. I don't care if it's one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, do something and post it online. The hardest part of that is, is pressing that post button and having it go out there on your LinkedIn or your Facebook or YouTube, whatever it is, challenge yourself to do something like that and do it consistently. Every single week, once a week, post something. If all of a sudden you go, you know what? I have more I want to share, then great. You have a bonus video. But when you start building that consistency every single week, you put something out there, then you're start, going to start being able to speak more freely. You're going to be more confident. Next time you see other people, you'll be able to speak better because you've been doing it on a weekly basis in front of lots and lots of people, depending on how many people go through your feed. So now, and I, and I think that's a great way. And even if you don't have anybody go through your feed, you're at least getting yourself comfortable, whether, you know, 
presenting yourself, talking, portraying your message and kind of or working to articulate and get there, kind of that comfort level. Now, one of the things that I think people, even, it, so let's say just to, or, or for uh, assumption's sake that, okay, I do all these things, get comfortable. I do a video once a week or twice a week and I start to get, you know, uh, some or comfort level there. How do you go about getting those in speaking engagements, if that's your intent. In other words, there's a difference between, hey, I can finally feel like I can go and present myself or I feel comfortable. Now I actually have to find opportunities where I can speak or I can present or I can share. And so I can show off my expertise or I can network or I can meet new people. How do you how do you find those? Well, again, it's the relationship stuff, right? Um, people want to be connected with people who are like minded. People like to be connected with other people who are uh, either experts or have a uh, have some value to add. And when you start doing those videos, let's say uh, what I usually do is, hey, what do you want to speak on? What do you want to be known as the expert in? What do you want to be branded as? What are those topics that you want to be known for? Do those topics on a weekly basis. And then every, every now and then people are just going to start noticing, commenting, hey, this person knows more about mindset. Hey, this person knows about real estate. That person knows more about crypto. And then all of a sudden you might get asked, hey, would you want to come and speak about this topic for our conference or our webinar or our, our, our panelists or something like that? And that's, that's how it starts. You have to get noticed by people in order for them to have you on their speaking platforms or their stages or their webinars. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, like I said, building those relationships, oh. jumping into Facebook groups, jumping into networking groups online whichever whichever platform you want to be in and find those groups that you want to be associated with. If it's crypto, jump into those cryptos uh, Facebook groups. If it's real estate, jump into those groups. There's speaking groups all over the place. You could jump into that and then just listen to what people do, uh, say, watch what they do. And then if there's opportunities for them to go, uh, for you to speak, volunteer. Say, hey, I would like to do a topic. Hey, I would like to speak on this topic. How do I get to become a feature speaker for this group mm -hmm. and start asking those questions. And then from there, it starts opening up more and more opportunities. Uh, for myself, that's what I did. I jumped into lots of real estate groups. I jumped into a lot of different networking, um, networking uh, tribes where it's all entrepreneurs. And once a week, we would meet up and we do five or six minutes of speaking per person. And you start building that, that muscle of being able to speak in front of people. Uh, then I started the podcast. Uh, the podcast is something that I use to build relationships on and then also uh, get my uh, get my name a little bit known throughout the world. I've interviewed people in Singapore, in Indonesia, in Australia, and vice versa. They would then invite me back onto their podcast, which now I have another group of people I could speak to, which I may or may not have connections to begin with. Uh, from there, I've been asked to speak on different webinars, uh, conferences, because of the people that I've interviewed on my on my podcast. So mm -hmm. when you start building that machine and it starts running, then you're, more and more opportunities are going to come mm -hmm. and more and more people is going to go, hey, do you want to speak here? you want to speak there? Uh, and then you can start building it from there. No, I think so. And, I, and, it, and it probably as simple as it, it sounds, I like the one you hit on, which is, I think you just go and ask people. In other words, as you're building the network, you you can let people know, hey, I'm look, you know, I love to share. I love to speak. I love to to be able to help people out in this given area. If you, if, you know, especially if they're already in that arena or they know about our opportunities, they're likely to be, is, is likely to be looking for people that would uh, fit well or otherwise be a, a good connection and, and would want to share. And so I think that they're just by that simple asking people as you build your network and as you continue to grow in that area definitely uh, makes, uh, makes perfect sense. And now, one thing that I think kind of goes a bit, uh, again, hand in glove with that is also writing content. So in other words, and that can be generally a book, it can be a blog, but, you know, kind of creating that content. So, you know, you're almost having multiple avenues where you're sharing, sharing and showing off your expertise. And that includes, hey, I'm, you know, writing a book and I'm here's the expertise and I'm are doing presentations and I'm networking with people. And it kind of creates that atmosphere of people be able to or be, you be able to showcase to people a lot of your different expertise but again i think some people either say hey i don't have anything to share or i don't know what to share or i don't know how i should go about doing it and so you know as you're looking to kind of create that content within the the written form any initial thoughts or feedback or, or guidance on how you might uh, jump into that 
I think the easiest way right now is uh, the videos that we talked about. Uh, when If you're able to speak on something, then you, you're able to create written content on something. Uh, when uh, some of my clients who goes, I don't know what to speak about. I'm like, okay, what, like, let's say, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's do a little bit of role play here. And uh, assuming that you are, are brand new and I just met you for the first time and you're like, you know what? I really need some help uh, creating content and you already have an expertise in your, in your law firm. And I, okay. Okay. What do you want to talk about, Devin? Hmm. Right. And then yeah. if you want to, I'm assuming you want to talk about law. <laughs> um, are you able to talk oh, about I, 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 it depends on what I want. I could talk about all sorts of things and I'll <laughs> probably find it all interesting and everybody else will be stuck. I always start to talk about law and then my wife's like, oh, this is boring. But no, I, <laughs> I think that, you know, I think it for me, it's always tailoring to the audience, right? Some people, if I'm talking with people that are interested in the law, they're attorneys or that are st startups and small businesses. Absolutely. I talk about law. And on the other hand, you know, if it's my wife and we're talking a lot of times it's anything but law. Um, and so it kind of depends on, and if I'm in a more religious setting, I talk about my religious belief. So I think it, at least for me, it kind of is I'm tailoring or what I'm speaking about, depending on the audience. Well, exactly. So depending on what content you want to create for which audience, and you may be talking about law, you may be talking about uh, your religious topics, you may be talking about mindset business, creating small businesses. And usually I start breaking that down. Okay, sm let's say small businesses. How many steps do you need to take to start a small business? You could go from 10 steps to 20 steps to five steps, whatever you want to go, right? I'm pretty sure you could break that down. And then eventually you could come up with a whole bunch of mini clips, two, three minutes each on each step along the way. Well, if you have many topics like that, that's like many chapters of a book or many paragraphs in the chapter. And they just keep on building that up. Those, those videos that I usually get my clients to do, well, we will take that, then you could transcribe it, then you could package it together, edit it, put it together into a, a blog, put it together as an article, and then eventually put them as, as chapters for a book. That's the easiest way I found for people to create content. Uh, break it down to little segments as to what you want to talk about and what you want to represent to represent your expertise. Uh, nowadays, of course, there's AI. Uh, you can always utilize AI services to come up with content. Uh, with that, it's very fast, very easy. Type in a few keywords and you can go, hey, I want it written in this kind of format, this type of voice, this type of intellect. Uh, for this audience and a whole bunch of stuff comes out and you have content already. My one thing about that is make sure you review what that is. And then two, um, make it your own. Take that mm -hmm. content, mold it so that it does sound like it's your voice. So it does have your expertise in it and your experiences in it. The reason why people want to connect with you and hear you speak about a certain topic is mainly because of your experiences your stories, what you've gone through, what you've uh, what you've lived through so that they can relate to what your uh, journey is rather than AI pumping out a whole bunch of information from what it finds on the internet. So therefore, when you are able to add in your stories to the content, that makes it your own and it makes it a lot more authentic. And then if anybody asks you, hey, I really love that thing about chapter one or chapter chapter two about this topic. Uh, give me more about that. You actually go, okay, I know what I'm going to talk about because you've actually wrote it or you actually contributed to it. So um, those are two ways I find that's very, very easy to create content right now. Yeah, no, I think that uh, absolutely. And, and I like that you hit on, you know, I think AI is a great tool, but it shouldn't replace your writing. In other words, if all you're doing is saying, hey, AI, write this about this topic, you tend to not lose your voice or tends to be a much more generic and doesn't or become personable. And yeah, it can be a great platform for you to get started, get some initial content that you can then craft and shape or get ideas or otherwise do. So I think that there's a lot of great tools and probably the, the takeaway I'm hearing is, you know, figure out how you get started and whether it's just start on a video a day, whether it's start, you know, writing a blog post a day, doing a post a day on social or something, as you get more comfortable with it and as you get more, do it more frequently, you tend to uh, have or get more success and, and it tends to, you know, kind of grow on itself. Well, as uh, as we're already wrapping towards the end of the podcast, and we barely scratched the surface on so many of these uh -huh. topics, but it was definitely a fun conversation, um, we'll, and we'll have to have you back on to share uh, more of your journey in the future. 
Um, but I always like to wrap up each uh, episode um, with one question. Um, so we'll jump to that now. So for uh, for that question, it's within your industry, what is the biggest myth and why is it wrong? Uh, let's say for real estate, um, one of the biggest myth is I don't have any money. I can't invest in real estate. Well, that's not true because you can always partner up with other people who has who has money. Uh, there's way of doing deals without any money. Uh, I've done lots of deals where I did, didn't contribute a cent to to my deals, and therefore it can be done because I think there's there's lots of different parties involved. And for a quick example, uh, lots of prop. Uh, let's say. Uh, buy, fix, and hold properties, and uh, buy, fix, and hold properties where we rent the property out. There's usually a a money person. There's also a person who manages it, or a person who does renovations and whatnot. Well, you could be one of those parties. You could play one of those roles. You don't have to be the person that comes up with money, as long as you add value to that project. Then you should be able to become a partner in that group and um and and benefit with everybody else. So you don't have to have money. You just have to be able to go out there and provide value that other people can't, but they could provide money. So mm -hmm. that is, I think, the biggest myth when it comes to real estate is if you don't have money, you can't do anything. Well, that's not true. Yeah, and I think that it, you know it's kind of the the same thing as if you don't have money, you can't do a you can't do your own startup or you can't do your own business. In other words, you can always come up with excuses or reasons why you can't do it, and it's not that they. You know, money isn't helpful. In other words, if you have millions of dollars and you want to start in real estate, it is probably easier than you have zero dollars. But either way, you can there are ways that you can go about attacking it. You can get into it. You can get the experience. You can do it with or partner with other people and get started and then continue to build out your expertise and your ability to expand into bigger deals and different jobs and everything and all everything else along that. So I think that that's uh, definitely a great uh, myth to dispel and a good one to learn from. <laughs> Well, now as people, uh, now as we wrap up, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? Uh, they can find me at fontra.com. They can also find me at uh, Your Area TV on YouTube, and then or email me at uh, fontra at your area TV, uh, your area .ca. Awesome. Well, definitely a lot of uh, great ways to connect, uh, support a great business, and if nothing else, uh, make a new best friend. So thank you again, Fong, for uh, coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you other listeners are out there, um, it, to help us share this uh, expertise and uh, with even more startups and small businesses to help them along their journey to success, don't forget to click share, subscribe, and leave us a review. And on that note, if you ever need help with your business along your journey with patents or trademarks, feel free to reach out to us and just go to strategymeeting.com. Grab some time with this chat. We're always here to help. Thank you again, Fong, for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Awesome. Thank you very much.